Oh, that's right. The teleprompter is not running, which makes this look weird. Hi, hello, and welcome to Technology Connextras, the channel where I keep preparing for things, despite the fact that I used to say I don't do that over here. This is the aftermath of uh, the last video of me doing the B-roll. And I just want to apologize because a couple people uh, expressed annoyance or found it distracting that this was left on when I was talking about the Geiger counter or when I was that part of the video. Here's why. This thing is defective. If I try to turn it on, it shuts back off. I have to turn this on while it is plugged in. And so it was just really annoying to have to keep doing that uh, between takes. So I basically just did the teaser in the beginning, put this away. That's why I ran upstairs because I had to plug this in, turn it back on. So that's just, that's, that's why. But anyway, uh, what we are doing here is uh, talking about some of the things, some questions that came up. And I have a number of things that I didn't show that I wanted to. One I just forgot, the other one people have asked me. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I'll just keep moving. Um, some people wanted to know, what does this look like running real gasoline? So I will record a clip of that for you. Um, right now it still has a little bit of white gas left in here. I'll start it back up on that, then put gasoline in it. And I'm gonna do that um, probably in the garage because um, well, I don't want to do that in here, and it's light outside right now, but who knows, by the time I get around to uploading this and editing it, maybe I can just do it outside. Uh, so here's that. Maybe I was talking over it the whole time. Who knows? So many options with editing. Here's a fun clip for you. When I was transferring the white gas from the uh, dual fuel lantern into the other one, I thought that I had gotten nearly everything out of the tank, so I just tipped it over onto the ground, thinking just a few drops would come out, but uh, quite a lot more came out but this gave me the perfect opportunity to show you why these lanterns are not something that I would use indoors. Watch this. Yeah, so leaks of white gas and of course gasoline are a lot more dangerous than kerosene. Kerosene's not really gonna do this, uh, but gasoline will absolutely ignite quite easily and turn into a very big problem. So uh, anyway, I just thought I'd show you this because learning opportunity. Next thing, why do you have to cover the hole with your thumb? Well, here's why. If you pump it without doing that, it, it doesn't build pressure. The air actually just comes right back out this hole. Now, why exactly the mechanism works like that, I don't know. But the other thing is, there's no resistance if you pull this up while still covering that. So a number of people, I saw a bunch of comments, people saying you should push it in, then let go and pull it out. That's not necessary. I, I can't see a situation where that meaningfully helps because literally just keeping my thumb on here, there's no difference in resistance to pulling it out compared to letting it go. The only thing that happens if you aren't holding it, is see it, the stem won't go in easily at all with your thumb over the hole, but it will if you're not touching it. So that's all that that is. It's actually part of the, um, I don't know the specifics of this valve, but you need to be covering that in order for it to actually, I mean, presumably it's taking the air that's in this tube and pushing it into the tank. Did I leave this? Wow, okay, apparently it was pretty pressurized. Next thing that I didn't show was I kept saying the mantles are very fragile and I never showed you how fragile they are. This is how fragile they are. Uh, you basically just have to touch it and it's destroyed. So literally they are ridiculously fragile. Um, which one? Oh, it's not here, the green lantern. So the one that's just like this, but not dual fuel. I actually tore the mantle, putting it back together at one point. So I have to get rid of that. I want to change it back to the modern yttrium mantles anyway, because I don't like the thorium ones. I mean, I could maybe try doing the uh, the weird ones that aren't really meant for Coleman lanterns, but they're really fiddly too. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to take the yttrium one off or the thorium one off and just get rid of it. 
Which on that note, some people have brought up, part of how these things are so fragile is, or as a consequence of their fragility, they create a lot of dust when you disturb them. So that is actually a fairly serious concern of the thorium mantles because you could breathe that dust in pretty easily and you don't want to do that. So when I was messing about with the thorium mantles at all, I was always doing that outside and making sure that the wind was moving away from me. So minimizing that concern as much as possible. But yeah, I mean, I really just don't get it how, I'm going to presume that in 1990 or, or whenever they first switched away from thorium, they were much worse than they are now because I really don't get that complaint whatsoever. But that is the fragility of the mantles. Next thing, ask me how I know. I used that phrase two times. I'll tell you. Uh, so the kerosene lantern, a couple of, a few mishaps occurred at various times. Uh, first one was simply that I didn't think to try to use a drinking straw when filling up this, uh, the alcohol cup. And so a lot of alcohol spilled and ended up in between this void space where the collar is hiding everything. And this is not installed correctly. I'll explain why that is shortly because that's another one of the mishaps. Um, and so the first time I lit this, everything seemed to be going normal. A little bit of alcohol burned off from the dish there and it seemed fine. But then eventually enough vapor got up into the lantern that it did set the apparently a lot of alcohol in here on fire. It was in flames. The, the class got completely charred. Uh, I had to pick it up like this and carry it over to, I was outside, but I was um, on my deck. So like, didn't want this burning out there. So I picked this up, carried it over to the driveway, put it down and watched it self extinguish, which thankfully it did. No explosions occurred. Yay. Uh, and then as far as why the collar is cattywampus like this, the leaking that it does, if you open the valve too early, I didn't understand what was happening. And I thought that it had, it was actually leaking because the green lantern, when I got that one, I mean, the other green one, it did have a leak. Uh, I pressurized it and I went to light it and it lit, but it lost pressure right away. And I didn't, I, I couldn't figure out why, but eventually it became clear because the fuel valve, again, behind this collar, it was leaking quite badly. So eventually white gas just started pouring out the, pouring around the sides. That was bad. I thought the same thing might be happening with this lantern, but it turns out, nope, this one was fine. It's just that the kerosene, if it's a liquid coming out of the generator, it falls into the mantle, but also back down this tube. And so comes out right on top of the fuel valve. So that's why I thought it was leaking, but it, was, it wasn't, it was just coming out of the generator. Uh, and then that leads me to another thing about this lantern, which a few people pointed out. I made an assumption, which I should not have made, there are holes here, like you stick the match through in the other lanterns. And I assumed that these holes were there simply because this style is also made for white gas. So I figured that was just for lighting with a match. But if I had purchased this lantern new, it would have come with a bottle, which has a, some sort of hook shaped spout that you can stick in here and fill the cup without taking the lantern apart. So it's not, as horrible as it seems to be in my video, because you, if I had the proper accessories, I wouldn't need to take this apart to light it. But the rest of the headaches are still there. And speaking of, oh, well, I should recap because I've just been going on and on. The ask me how I know the first was leaks will happen with the other lantern. The, I think the generator wasn't tight. Something wasn't tight and it was after the valve because it didn't leak until you opened the valve. So I think it was the connection from the generator to the valve. Uh, so if there are any leaks, it's gonna, because there's pressure in the tank, it's gonna come out and it's not pleasant. And then the other asked me how I know, uh, if you don't wait until all the alcohol has burned away, which I, I didn't do once. I thought, oh, it's been, probably went through about half the alcohol and I thought that's gotta be enough. It was not enough. 
<laughs> and so liquid kerosene went everywhere. And yeah. Oh, and the other thing, which I didn't even talk about, I had assumed that if, like, say you needed to refuel this, okay? The problem with all of these lanterns is to refuel it, you have to take the cap off. So then you've lost the pressure. The lantern's going to go out. So I thought, well, maybe, you know, the generator's not going to cool off immediately. Maybe if you extinguish the lantern and you're fast enough refueling it, you can match like this. No, you can't. I extinguished it, let it sit for about 20 seconds, and tried to match light it. And it kind of works, but the problem is you still get a lot of liquid kerosene. So again, fireball coming out of this thing. This one is literally like, I'm more comfortable with it because it's not burning gasoline, but I'm less comfortable with it because you have to very much understand how these work or else follow the instructions verbatim because this thing has been on fire several times. And uh, that's why I'm, I said I'm just barely comfortable using this indoors and why I think you shouldn't because until you gain the experience on how these things work, man, are they, are they terrifying. Another thing that I didn't even talk about, which I should have, was that when you turn these off, there's a very interesting thing that happens. Curiously, it doesn't happen with the kerosene lantern, even though it implies that it would. So don't know exactly what's up with that, but the propane one, you shut it off, it's off. You cut off the supply of fuel immediately. But the white gas ones, when you close the valve, there's still a lot of gasoline in the generator and it will keep boiling for a little while. So they stay lit. I realize this is backwards the whole time. So these stay lit for many seconds after you shut them off. And in fact, if you watch closely in the dark, you see very interesting things sometimes happen inside the mantle with the flame. You get a little flame front, they'll sometimes burst in and out, which is also handy because these, if you shut off, you have about 40, 50 seconds where you can just turn them back on. You don't have to get a match out again. This one though, it goes out pretty much immediately. I don't know if that's because kerosene doesn't evaporate well or if it literally just absolutely needs the heat from the mantle to keep going. I don't know what the difference is, but this one, when you shut it off, it basically goes out immediately. Oh boy, this section turned into a disaster, so I've come back down to re-record it. Now, I've left the dehumidifier running in the room next to this one. I'm kind of curious how well it comes through on the mic, um, well being like, how much you can hear it. So we'll find out together. So what I want to do here is show the process of starting this lantern in real time because I didn't do that in the video. There were cuts. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk about and clarify my thoughts on why this lantern just seems so absolutely silly to me in especially 2021, but even in like 2000. But my perspective is mine, and that's part of why I wanted to re-record this. So, remember, you shouldn't have to take it apart if you have the correct accessory. I don't have that though, so gotta do this. And the process that I settled on um, was the drinking straw, just covering it with your finger after you dip it in there. You still gotta be careful though, because you don't want to touch the mantle. And usually I end up spilling a little bit, but a drop or two won't, won't make a difference. Okay, the cup is mostly full and I just realized I forgot to pump it. So I'll do that in a little bit. Just set that off to the side. Give that a light. Make sure it doesn't go out. You will not be able to tell that it's lit in the camera, I'm sure but it is lit. So now I'll put the globe back, put the top back. And put the handle back. Okay, I'm going to wait to pump it just because the alcohol is so full. The other thing that annoys me about this lantern is just that the handle goes this way when 
that is the front of the lantern. But that being the front, you see the the air intake tubes are in front of the mantle. I just feel like the top, the whole thing on top should be rotated 90 degrees, but it's a little late for that complaint. But anyway, so the thing about this lantern, which I thought would be self-evident, but either wasn't or the people who are commenting about this are in a very different situation for me and are explaining or are imagining this situation in a very different from a very different angle. I thought it would be obvious that yes, kerosene is cheaper than white gas, except how much are you realistically using over a year? Because my whole perspective on this is that these would be used for either emergency lighting or for camping. If you are in a situation where you have to rely on this technology for your lighting every day, then yes, I suppose this is a bigger consideration. It might make a very silly noise right now. I'll stop talking if it makes if it makes that noise, but um, actually I can insert it from the other one. There was that noise. Hopefully it makes it again. Uh, anyway, the, where was I? I'm sorry, this is going to be, I don't want to cut this because I want you to see this in real time. But my perspective is not that this is an everyday source of light. If it is an everyday source of light for you, then obviously the running costs are going to be more significant. Um, the other thing, I don't know, I know that like gasoline prices in the United States are completely out of whack from everywhere else, but considering that the Coleman dual fuel model will run on gasoline, uh, that also makes this seem ridiculous because um, just use pump gas. You don't need to get cheap kerosene anyway, but but again, that's a, largely a problem of my blind spots and my biases, not recognizing that there are people in the country and in this country even that are going to rely on this source of light a lot. But the conversation that we're going to have after this section about efficiency is where I think especially now, even if you had unreliable access to electricity, specifically for lighting alone, using these rarely makes any sense. But now about half the alcohol has been burned through, so I need to um, pressurize the tank. This is always very fun. And actually that's a small advantage of the kerosene one is it doesn't have the fuel and air valves. So the white gas models, they often lose a lot of pressure when you are at lighting them and you have to pump them up right, right away. This one, you pretty much don't have to do that. But yeah, I'm probably repeating. Oh yeah, this happened too. There's smoke coming out of it. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of smoke. And I think what that is, it smells like kerosene vapor I think this is actually kerosene vapor coming out of the generator because when you turn this off, it just goes out right away and then the kerosene stops boiling. So I think that this is actually vaporized kerosene. I'm not brave enough to try and light it, otherwise I would. That's coming out of the generator right now. Hopefully you can see that, otherwise I'm just talking about nothing. But. That may also be an indicator that it's safe to light the lantern, but I'm still not going to do it yet because if you do it too early, it's really a mess. I should keep talking. No, we don't need to keep talking. I'm going to watch this, but how long has it been? multiple minutes. Okay, the alcohol is so close to being gone that the flame's gonna start dying down soon, so now we can turn, turn the lantern on. And there you go. Curiously, that smoking has not stopped, so it could be... I wonder if it's the flame burning off the uh, carbon deposits that are up there? Not sure. The other interesting thing is if you leave the, 
the flame really low. The alcohol has just gone away. It loses intensity because the generator is not getting as much heat anymore. You have, so if you just left it at this intensity, it might go out. It's very finicky. Um, so I've probably said this like three times now, and I know I've been very repetitive, but the problem, I just, unless you actually have to use one of these for your everyday source of light, specifically the model that runs on kerosene, there are just so many downsides to it that even though it costs a little bit less to use, I feel like you're never, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, certainly if you're using this as emergency light or camping or for camping, it makes even less sense for camping because uh, I, kerosene stoves are really rare here. If you have a camping stove, it's going to be propane or um, white gas. So I just, the justification for this product, even though, yes, if you are buying fuel in bulk, this is going to cost less to use. It just does not add up to me. And that's why I was making fun of this product. And while I, uh, I know that, yes, you can get kerosene for significantly less money than white gas, you could use the dual fuel model and just use pump gas. So I, this is a very perplexing product to me that, that Coleman would still make it if indeed they do it. Maybe they're back ordered forever, but, uh, anyway, we will now move on to the next section and hopefully this segue makes sense. I'm going to put this out before we get into the main discussion of the energy efficiency, just so you can see that this one, it's out. If I turn this back on, nothing happens and kerosene just <laughs> smoke just came out the top. So literally you have no chance to turn it back on uh, unless you're really quick. Like if I match lit it right now, it might still work, but this is not an easy product to live with. So even if kerosene is so much cheaper, it's just like, I don't understand how you are finding a justification for this product. I'll just leave it at that because I've talked about it too much. Okay, so now let's talk about if you are camping, what makes sense? A battery lantern or one of these uh, mantle lanterns? I'm gonna tell you right now, the math as I've done it shows that there are virtually no scenarios where it makes sense for you to be using a gas mantle lantern in really for like 10 years at this point, but certainly not right now. And I will explain. But the first thing I want to uh, talk about is propane versus white gas, because this is an interesting, uh, the conclusions are interesting because there's a lot to consider. This white gas, uh, basically the cheapest that I found it is maybe $10 a gallon for, uh, this was $12.50, the cost that I paid for it. And that's what I'm just gonna consider uh, because like at Walmart, the little can, which is over there, you can't see it, but that one quart of white gas was $10. So, and that wasn't even Coleman brand. So anyway, we'll, we'll say $12.50 a gallon the cost isn't really the most important thing here anyway. These propane bottles are about $4 each. If you buy them in packs of four, the cost goes down to about $3.50. So propane is actually slightly more energy dense than white gas. Uh, and I'm gonna be using, I know I'm using our bonkers units here, but um, it's all relative, so it doesn't particularly matter. But Propane contains 21,500 BTUs per pound or 6.3 kilowatt hours. One of these bottles is exactly one pound of propane. White gas is 20,000 BTUs per pound or 5.86 kilowatt hours. So it's slightly less. But the caveat is this jug is one gallon, about six pounds, and that's 35.16 kilowatt hours. And you're gonna need five and a half of these to match the actual energy output of this one gallon jug. That's a lot more volume and it's more weight because this is just tin or whatever it is. Probably not tin. Is it steel? 
I don't know what this is. Let me know. Uh, and this is the, um, the steel cylinders of propane. This actually weighs nearly twice as much as the propane inside of it altogether. Um, not, not it weighs three times, the can doesn't weigh twice as much as the propane, but this is almost two pounds by weight. So you're gonna need to be carrying around 10 or so pounds in propane bottles. They're also much larger compared to a six and a half pound can, which is much smaller. So even though propane has a slightly higher energy density, for all practical considerations, white gas is more energy dense. Even if you wanna consider a different form factor, because I grant that these one pound bottles are not ideal, but even something like a, a what do you, a grill, a grill jug, whatever those are called, I think they hold 20 pounds of propane, but the thing itself weighs 10 or 15 pounds. So you have to, the weight of the container is significant when you have to hold it under pressure. So by that consideration, white gas is definitely superior to propane, except for the fact that like this, you don't need, even compared to a white gas lantern, this is just turn the valve and hit the button. You might have to hit it a few times, but then it's lit. Another reason why these feel safer to use indoors. Uh, but when it comes to the, you know, if you are camping, if you're carrying this stuff with you, you're gonna save a lot of space and weight by going with white gas over propane. And I'm sure there's lots of camping channels out there that are doing even more thorough analysis of this than I am. But I'm just pointing out that it's not, propane has advantages as far as ease of use, but it is, it is going to bog you down more if you're carrying it around with you. Um, and then the other thing is when you when you consider the cost, white gas still wins out at the prices we've gone through. So this is 35.16 kilowatt hours for a gallon of white gas. That works out to 35 cents per kilowatt hour. And the propane works out to 55 cents per kilowatt hour at $3.50 per cylinder. So it's a significant price premium and space premium and weight premium for better ease of use. So if you are actually camping and need to be carrying everything with you, white gas is gonna be better. Hi there, it's me. After the first past edit, Alec, with some extra context I wanna make sure gets in here. The discussion that I'm about to have regarding the efficiency and appropriateness of lanterns that use gas mantles in 2021 is very much biased from my perspective. I recognize that everything that I'm about to say presumes a lot. It presumes that you have regular access to electricity at home and that you have the means to make the upfront investment to get away from a lantern like this. And I recognize not everybody is in that boat. However, part of why I think this discussion is useful is that even in parts of the world that are not in that situation, that, that don't have access to regular electricity, even access to sporadic electricity and a few batteries, um, they can take care of your lighting needs a lot better than these lanterns can and more safely and less, uh, just there'd be a lot of advantages to doing that. Uh, so what I mean by that is, for example, if you have access to even a 50 watt solar panel and you can charge a few batteries with that, you know, four hours of sunlight is gonna get you 200 watt hours of energy little less with efficiency. And with the discussion we're about to have, you'll see that 200 watt hours in a battery with modern LEDs is quite a lot of light. So while I am admittedly not that aware of many of the situations out there where these lanterns are still being used, I do think that um, it's very worthwhile to try to get those situations taken care of with something else because um, if that's a solar panel that you have access to or some sort of time-shared community. I know there's some communities where like electricity is available for some set period of time during the day. Uh, really a small battery like this one can take care of quite a lot. That's the discussion we're about to have. So I recognize I have blind spots. I'm not trying to ignore many of the situations out there, but it might come across that way. So just know that's not intentional. But now we have to talk about batteries. These uh, lights, which I've had for quite a while, they were in the RGB video, RGB lighting video. 
These are some incredibly handy things. I've used them as emergency lighting. I've used them as task lighting, and I use them when I make my videos, whenever I need extra light on a subject. In fact, there are two on the table because I forgot that I used one in this most recent video. These are... I, I've never tested their runtime, but on their low intensities, you'll definitely get more than an hour of light output from it. And this is very, very bright. I mean, I know this isn't going to be clear pointing at the camera because this is just going to look like a white rectangle. But you get a lot of light. In fact, tell you what, I'm going to just turn off the main lights. That is, you know, two feet away from me on its lowest setting. This is the lowest brightness setting it offers. If I crank it up, well, let's change the color temperature. Well, it should be all the way high because so technically this is the very lowest setting because it was brighter with the other diodes. And that's still quite a lot of light. Um, I'm probably a little underlit than I was before, but considering that this is running off a battery and this is its lowest setting, if I turn it up all the way, I didn't mean to turn it off. That's full brightness. So this is what I'm talking about. Like right now, if I have, if there were a power outage, this is probably the first thing I would look for because it's a great portable, it, it weighs hardly anything. I can hold it like I am now and see everything in the room around me with just one of these. They don't last very long on their highest setting, but certainly turn that down to 5%, which is still so much light. This will run for an hour or two, but the specific light doesn't even matter. I needed to restart the camera, so this is going to be long. Hope you like rambling. So why am I talking about these? This is why. These use whatever Sony uh, Info Lithium, it's been, they've been copied and used in so many different video production products. Like, in fact, the main lights that I'm using could be run on a pair of these battery packs. They don't have to be hooked, hooked up to an AC adapter. But these batteries are ubiquitous and fairly cheap. And so I wanted to figure out, with these batteries, how much space, weight, and money would it take to get this much light? So we're talking about one gallon of white gas. How much light will it produce in one of these lanterns and what would it take to achieve that with LEDs and these batteries? So this battery pack is just shy of 16 watt hours. And by my rough estimation, we can fit 70 of them in the volume of this can. So that would be 15 pounds of batteries. So that's gonna be a lot heavier than this. But I've done the math cutting that in half because I wanna see Let's see where we would get if we made it the same weight, and then we have half the volume. So now we have 35 of these batteries. That's 560 watt hours. And a one, at 100 lumens per watt, which is pretty achievable now with LEDs, in fact, we've, we've doubled that for really high efficiency applications. That's 56 hours of runtime at 1,000 lumens, or the unit that I've made up, 56 kilolumen hours. Now, at what these lanterns all operate at about one lumen per watt. So 100 times less efficient than mediocre LEDs these days. So that would mean that while this contains 62 and a half times as much energy as 35 of these batteries, it only produces 35 kilolumen hours. So this is why I'm like, woo. None of these make any sense in this century because you need to have a very specific requirement in order for it to, in order for it to make sense to be carrying this around with you for light. And I will elaborate more as we go on because I'm sure you're all thinking, of the various scenarios in which batteries are worse. And I know, but we're gonna get there. Basically, the problem is because an, an LED light source is literally a hundred times more efficient than any of these gas mantle lanterns, 
you only need to get 1% of the energy density from this fuel into one of these batteries. And we're already past that. Because of that, it becomes really hard to justify using these lanterns as your light source even if you need to carry the fuel with you for some other purpose. Because imagine you are, you have a camp stove. Well, this bottle of propane with a camp stove will be able to, just trying to think rough equivalencies, you'll be able to cook a fair number of meals with one bottle of, of propane. And if you're gonna use it in a lantern, you're gonna very quickly run this out just producing light, whereas, to get the same amount of light output as one of these bottles of propane, you only need about five of these. That's, that's nothing. Five, I mean, literally this, the lights I bought each came with one. So I've got four sitting here around right now. These lights, if these were all charged, would far and away exceed the amount of light that I could get out of this lantern on a bottle of propane. And I hear you saying, if they're fully charged, I know, I said we'll get there. So, now, cost of batteries, valid concern. These are about 10 bucks. Uh, they can be had a little less in bulk, but uh, we'll, we'll assume $10. And the other thing is, um, this is actually a bit on the small side as far as capacity. We can get them in two kilo, kilo lumen hour, so 20 watt hour packs for about 10 bucks. So we need to spend $180 in batteries to get to the same runtime figure as this gallon of white gas. That's a lot, definitely. But this is, this is where I'm getting hung up. If you're camping enough that you are going through, <coughs> excuse me, that you're going through 10 of these gallons in a year, well, that doesn't seem that bad anymore, does it? Because that's only gonna cost about 50 cents to charge all of these up. One very important thing I wanna make sure that I put in here because I realized that I wasn't doing good, I, I led you down a wrong path potentially. You don't need to spend $180 on batteries. That is what you would need to spend to get this much light out on one trip. No one is saying that you need this for one camping trip because remember, this is 35 hours at full brightness essentially. So that's taken care of, let's say you need it for five hours a night, a whole week of camping. If you're only going on a three-day camping trip, you need half as many batteries. And or if you have access to solar panels, you need even fewer. So the example of $180 was how much money you would need to spend to be carrying around this much equivalent energy and light output. But that's not necessarily representative of what you would actually need because Another thing to keep in mind is if you're going camping and you're using this for your fuel for both light and cooking, well, there you go. You're sharing it anyway. So just wanted to make that clear. The other thing is uh, these are modular battery packs with extra goodies inside of them. I think they all have um, over discharge management circuitry and all that. You can get bigger cells that have the same form factor that just have more cells in them. And then you get to that target a lot quickly uh, as far as cost, and you can also just get raw lithium cells for much, much less. So um, I, I found this particular battery pack, for example. One of them will get you through the night with 50% brightness, um, just one. So you're gonna talk about 10 hours of light output at 500 lumens with one of those battery packs. That's that's really a lot of light. And the other thing is, that's only 50 watt hours. So you can have a pretty small solar panel with you and recharge it that way if you want to. Or you just have a couple of those battery packs. The reason I'm bringing up solar is that you don't necessarily need to buy as many batteries to get the capacity of this if you have some way to recharge them while you're out there. And I know that solar is relying on the environment, there will be variables and all that, but my, the reason why I'm pretty comfortable saying it virtually never makes sense to use one of these lanterns anymore is that even if you are also carrying with you a camping stove, you're gonna waste so much of that fuel 
in one of these lanterns than if you just had brought with you $30 of batteries and a rechargeable lantern. I didn't look, I was originally gonna start making comparisons with commercially available lanterns on Amazon, but the problem is it's so hard to verify what their battery capacities actually are and user reviews aren't really gonna tell you anything. So that's why I just decided to do this more theoretically with these battery packs, because these show us right now, you can best this amount of fuel with half the volume, the same weight, for about, a, for about $200. And yeah, these batteries are not gonna last forever, but as I said, if you're camping enough that the cost of fuel is a concern, then $180 worth of batteries over 10 camping trips where you would have gone through a gallon of this, suddenly you're at cost parity. And here's another thing to add, extreme cold. You're correct, if you're worried about extreme cold, that batteries like this, not gonna be such a great idea. However, there's this video that I made like three years ago now on the LED traffic light and the danger of, but sometimes. And I think that's a pretty classic case of, but sometimes. Of course, there are some of you out there who are gonna be camping up in the mountains in extreme cold and would not be well suited with batteries for your light source. But you need to ask yourself if that's representative of the norm. Too often on the internet, people will find the exception to a particular anything and be very loud about it. And not to put myself too high up on my horse, but Let's try not to do that. I'm aware, as with everything, there's always gonna be special cases where people need accommodation that's different than what generally is acceptable for everyone else. But sometimes it doesn't need to be, you know, it doesn't negate the broader point. And I think that's what's important here. The fact that some percentage of people are still gonna need a gas mantle lantern does not mean that the majority of people would be better suited for something else. That's all I'm saying here. I just cannot find a way to make any of these justifiable for a situation where you know that you need a portable light source. And here's the big caveat. Where I think these work is emergency lighting. Also because you may want the benefit of emergency heating. With the problem with batteries as you as you very well know, is that you need to keep them charged and they also age with time. A bottle of propane is really gonna just be functional 10 years down the line. And so I can see how these would be useful as an emergency light source. And in fact, I'm gonna be keeping a propane lantern around because for that, they're really handy, especially because you don't need matches to light it. Just hit the button until it ignites. And, you know, just have to keep an extra bottle on hand and I've got seven, well, seven hours of, of light on its full brightness, but significantly more on reduced intensities. That is a use case I can see. Unfortunately, that leaves basically the propane or the kerosene one to my mind as being acceptable because I still am not comfortable using one of these indoors necessarily. Just because if they develop a leak, it's bad news. This could also leak and also could be bad news, but uh, you know, I'm just less worried about that happening so long as you install the bottle correctly and verify that it's not leaking when you go to use it. So yeah, that's, that's the conclusion I've come to. I understand that there are situations where it's gonna make more sense to have a lantern like this. Uh, and if you are camping like in the winter and you wanna add some heat anyway, Sure, that makes sense, but except outside of really, or except in really specific circumstances, it's gonna make way more sense to just carry some batteries with you. Not only because there's a little bit of a higher upfront cost, sure, but you lose all of, you know, much less dangerous than any of these lanterns. You don't have to worry about it consuming oxygen. You don't have to worry about the fumes like with the kerosene lantern. We're living in a time when portable energy storage is, in the form of batteries has gotten cheap enough that, I mean, I don't want to bring up electric cars, but like the reason, 
the fact that electric cars are like right near cost parity with internal combustion engines, I think we're there. And for lanterns, we've been there for easily 10 years, considering that this form factor of battery has been around for, I think, 25 years now. I don't know the specifics, but this, this info lithium pack has been around for so long. That's why all these companies use it because as a modular battery pack, it's pretty ideal. But yeah, I'm gonna now edit this and hopefully this isn't a disaster uh, of rambling, but I hear you like these videos. Some of you even like them more than the main channel videos, which I don't quite, I mean, I can understand how you feel that way because the main channel videos are very much more produced and I'm kind of acting in them, but I always feel like my brain is just going on and on in circles in, in these videos here, but um, that's why it's Conextras. The standards are lower. Also, while I have you here, be on the lookout for a new series I'm gonna be starting on Conextras that is inspired by a request from one of my patrons. Um, I don't wanna get into details right now, but it's not, it's nothing new. It's gonna be recycling older footage, but with a different intent. And going forward, it's gonna change how I record the B-roll for many of the videos that I currently, um, that, I, that I do, because uh, you'll see at the time, I'll just do a little explainer, but it has mainly to do with the sound of the um, of the various clips that I've recorded over the years doing this. So we will get that going too. So Connextras will actually, I hope to see it getting a lot more content in the near future, but it's, it's, um, it may, it won't be anything like this. It will be, that series will be quite different, but I also have other plans too. Um, yeah. Okay. Bye.